The second problem with this second myth is that it confuses correlation with causation. So let's suppose the numbers do drop during a Democratic presidency, the numbers of abortions. Well, so what? Why should we believe the two are related in the first place? There, there could be other trends that influence abortion rates during a Democratic presidency. Now, of course, I know people are going to say, well, no one can prove causation. Yes, proving causation is very difficult to do. Sometimes all we can do is prove correlation. But still, the point stands. We don't know if it's purely because of Democratic policies. And we certainly know it's not because they want to decrease abortions. My friend Nathan Apodeca makes a great point regarding this error in this myth. He makes the point that pro-lifers often step up their game when a pro-choice president is in office, both in the movement and amongst pro-life politicians, because they know that there's a greater threat to the unborn and to the pro-life movement when a Democrat is in the White House. So they increase their efforts to advocate on behalf of the unborn and provide resources to women in crisis pregnancy. Right. This is what conflict does. Conflict should bring out the best of us. Sometimes it brings out the worst, but it functions as a call to duty because you recognize that there's a threat that needs to be dealt with. So that makes sense. But during a Republican presidency, unfortunately, such efforts may end up decreasing because sometimes, unfortunately, complacency sets in, right? Pro-life Republican politicians might not be as committed to advocating for life because there's less of a threat to the unborn when a Republican is in the White House. So people see greater efforts to protect the unborn in law, so they make less of an overall effort themselves, and this could also impact the rate as well. So correlation doesn't necessarily prove causation. Now, many people will say, well, the reason that they're decreasing is because Democrats and the Democratic president president and his administration, what they do is, is they focus on the underlying factors of what drives a woman to get an abortion in the first place. Isn't that what you want to do pro-life? the heart of the matter, the root cause of an abortion. Now, most pro-lifers would say the root cause is bigotry, is the bigoted view of the unborn, is the dehumanizing view of the unborn, that they're not really full persons. And so because they're not really full persons, their dismemberment is somehow acceptable. That would be the root of the problem. However, Democrats, of course, will say, well, it's social. It's social issues, right? It's economic issues or it's systemic racism issues. And if we can just deal with those issues, then women won't kill their children. So we should focus on the cause and root of abortion, which Democrats will do better. So you should support them, pro-lifer. But many times this critique comes from pro-choicers, from people who want to keep abortion legal. So why should we care about reducing abortion if it doesn't intentionally kill an innocent human being? This is what pro-lifers asked to Hillary Clinton years ago when she said abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. Why should it be rare, Hillary? You have a 100% approval rating from the National Abortion Rights Action League. You love abortion because you don't believe it's a person with rights. So why should it be rare if it's not a person with rights? If it's just a blob of tissue, then there's no moral demand to make that action less, to decrease those abortions. Now, imagine someone saying that, well, you know, the underlying cause of spousal abuse is psychological. So instead of making wife abuse illegal, we need to provide counseling for men. We need to address the underlying causes of what drives men to punch their wives in the face in the first place. But don't make spousal abuse illegal. Just focus on the underlying root and cause. And Democrats do that the best. Ridiculous. <laughs> Everyone would say, no, first we should definitely like make it illegal for like men to beat their wives. And then maybe we can talk about the psychological effects driving men to do that, besides being a degenerate. And lastly, one could argue, quite credibly, that there are underlying causes for all types of evil behavior. There's underlying causes for rape, murder, and theft. But that hardly means that it's misguided to pass laws against them. So the unequal application of this rule that we should address the underlying causes that lead people to perform evil actions and not ban the practice in question gives away the game. It shows that they don't really believe the unborn to be a full person, a full human under the law with equal dignity, value, and worth. These are merely myths created at a politically opportune moment in order to steal votes away from the Republican Party by indoctrinating squishy pro-lifers and fake conservatives who will be susceptible to these myths. Mm -hmm.